Hi, my name is Ann Rosenthal, and I'm here in my studio in Bloomfield, just down the street from uh, the pool, which is very busy right now in summertime. So um, the purpose of this video is to give you some drawing tips so that you can contribute to the design of the asphalt art project that I am doing through the Bloomfield Development Corporation and with my partner, Joanne Moran. And the asphalt art mural is going to be in Friendship Park, not in the park, but adjacent to the park. And it's going to depict the plants, the leaves representing the trees in the park, the birds you might see in the park, and native plants that uh, are the birds and uh, other critters um, like and need for their survival. So part of the idea of this is, um, is to learn about our local environment, to learn about the trees, the birds, um, and as I said, what, the, what they need to survive and thrive along with us. So, um, so this is the first of a series of what we're calling LEARN events. And there's going to be um, a bird walk and a tree identification walk this month. And so we hope you might join us for that as well. And all that information is on the website, lunastreet.art. So let's get started here. The first exercise we're gonna do is a leaf rubbing. And we're gonna use two different implements for that. I'm using copy paper and I'm pointing out that you want to use the side of the leaf that is the most raised, so that's probably the back of the leaf. Now I'm using a crayon here, just a simple kid's crayon, wax crayon, and that works great as you are going to see here. And just hold down the copy paper or you could tape it, and then you don't have to put a lot of pressure, but go over using the side of the crayon. So take the wrapping off a piece of crayon and use the side of the crayon and do your rubbing. You can use a dried leaf like I have here, or you can use a fresh leaf that you get from the park. So there you have it a leaf rubbing. The second implement we are going to use is a graphite bar. And that's something you probably have to go to an art store for, like Dick Blick in Shadyside. But you can see it works quite nicely. It's very soft. And you can go over it as I just did and then kind of go back through and Pick up some stronger edges by going over the, the sides of the leaves. leaf. <laughs> the next exercise is to use a pencil and to to number two pencil and just um, just go around the leaf real easy. Now one thing is you do want to try to get some of the like nuances of the edges of the leaf because that is one of the ways you identify a leaf in a tree is by the type of edges. So some leaves are kind of more scalloped on the edges, some are spiky. This one is kind of smooth, but then it has these little, uh, they almost look like thorns, really. So you don't have to, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you want enough of that edge detail so that it 
the leaf is identifiable. So you can see I'm going around including the stem. So you can go to Friendship Park and you can carefully, so you don't hurt the tree, pick off some leaves from different trees. In the handout in the drawing section of the website, the drawing guidelines, it lists the trees in Friendship Park so you can see what those are and try to find those. We will have a leaf ID event coming up, I think it's the 30th, toward the end of the month. So there you have it. And then if you need to go over it a little bit, if you missed a spot, as I just did, you can fill that in. The next exercise is to do a tracing. So you can see here I have an image out of a book. You could use a book or you could use a printout, which could be black and white would be fine, off the internet, an image off the internet. And then use some tracing paper and trace, in this case, a monarch butterfly. But you could do this with a bird or a leaf as well. And the first thing I'm doing is just outlining the basic large shapes. So the head of the butterfly and the, wi the wings. There's two wings, well, four uh, total, but we're only seeing two. So I'm outlining those. So get your big shapes before you start doing the details like I am now. And you don't necessarily have to do all the details. You don't have to do every single little dot there. But you can do some so that we have the idea of what the pattern is. If you want to do them all, that's fine, but you don't necessarily have to do them. So you can see I'm doing some, but not all. Also, some tracing papers are more transparent than others, so you might want to check that. Don't forget to do the, uh, the antenna, so that's important. So there you have that. I, I checked it. I decided I wanted to do a little bit more. And so I put it back down again. You can use something like, oh, masking tape, like painter's tape, to hold your tracing paper a little easier. Okay, so there you have it. So the last exercise I'm going to show you is drawing freehand. And that's kind of a little more challenging, but I encourage you to do it if you want to. So I'm using this cone flower, and I was showing how First you want, kind of like the last thing we did, is identifying the main shapes. So there's that inside circle and then there's the outside circle. Right, it's the inside circle and then the outside circle and then the petals. So I'm showing you there the petals, have the shape of the petal and there's a little notch at the top. So then I'm going to start drawing the petals. 
and you can see they're sort of attached to the center and not all the petals look the same and they kind of curve and they turn in uh, and so on like I'm doing with that one kind of curls inward so I think it's more interesting visually if they aren't all the same Facing might be a little different. They might overlap a bit. So that outside circle is really just as a guideline, which you can erase later. I'm not going to draw all the petals. I'm just kind of showing you the approach that you should draw. You don't have to count the number of petals and make sure you have the right number. I'm also adding some little veins there. So now the center, there's this pattern with those spikes. I'm kind of indicating with these curved lines actually called a mathematical term, the Fibonacci sequence. And you might look that up, it's interesting. Quite a number of plants and like shells and so on have that form. So then I'm adding these spikes in those little cells, you might call them. And then I am going to erase that outside circle. And I could fill things in a little bit, modify things if I want to. I was always taught in art school, don't erase anything. But I think it's totally fine to erase if you want to. Showing that overlap there, so I erased where the lines overlap. And then the stem, if you look on the back of the flower, you'll see the stem, if it's a one stem, comes out from the, from the center on the back. So that's kind of what I'm figuring out there. And then if I want to add the, a leaf off the stem, I can do that. You could do that. So once you're done, with your drawings, you can you can submit up to three drawings. And once you're done, you go to the website, right? LunaStreet.art and go to the drawing section. Okay, so you can go to the learn menu and then select drawing at the top of the website, the website or on the home page, you'll see to the right, it also has learn, draw, and submit a drawing, and uh, paint. So go to the drawing section. That's where you'll find the handout on the trees in the park and the birds and so on that you can use for these exercises. And, um, and there's also a form to submit your drawings. And one of the things that it asks, or a couple things, is what is the name of the plant or bird or tree? And why did you select that? So when you submit the drawing, you can take a photo with your iPhone or iPad, you, or you can, um, you can scan it. 
And there's a cool free app called Scanner Pro, Scanner Pro, which is a really good app. And, um, and then you submit it. Just try to try to make sure that you have good lighting and you don't have like a shadow over it or something. Sometimes either shooting from above or um, it, or pinning it to a wall and shooting it straight. And um, also out shooting it outside where there's sunlight, not direct, indirect sunlight, but sun. Um, that'll give you good lighting too, okay? So if you have any questions, please feel free to email us. There's contact uh, information also on the website. And we look forward to seeing your drawings that we can include either in the asphalt art design or in a guide. Um, it depends on how many drawings we get, how many we can include. So, but we look forward to seeing all your drawings. Okay, thanks so much and happy drawing.